are European countries in general more democratic than African countries? Probably to a certain extent, but that is still far from the whole picture. That and many other facts regarding democracy will be available when the varieties of democracy, or VDEM, have compiled data from 329 different variables from countries all around the world. From an academic point of view, there are two uh, measures of democracy today, Freedom House and Polity 4. They are very narrow in their conception of democracy, and there are many dimensions of democracy that they are not measuring. So from an academic point of view, our analysis are extremely limited. The second reason is that about 13 billion US dollars are spent every year on democracy support in, in, in the world. And with the limited measures of democracy, there is very little we know about whether those 13 billions have any effects or not. It's very important that we deepen the understanding of democracy and of democratic process. Uh, because there's also a quite a widespread opinion that I see repeatedly come up again and again in, in media that, oh, all this money to, to uh, democracy and human rights, it's all been wasted. Nothing has changed anywhere. But if you look at actually the indicators and if you really um, gather data on specific aspects of democracy, you, you see that there has been very positive change and a lot has happened. And it's important to see this change when it has been positive, positive but also to see when it has been negative and, and to analyze what the factors behind this are. In order to find these answers, VDEM collects data not only from present time, but all the way back to the year 1900. In the spring of 2014, that will sum up to more than 20 million data on democratization from more than 160 countries. I think a number of countries will be happy to begin with. A country like Uruguay will score very high probably on participatory and deliberative dimensions of democracy and maybe show, be shown to be more democratic than even Sweden or the United States or the UK or somebody like a country like that. Um, and I think there will be many countries that are more democratic than we think uh, if we just think about the sort of the, the American type or narrow conception of democracy. Uh, and then, of course, there will be a number of countries who will not be that happy, uh, who pretend or like to pretend or that they are democratic, but um, won't come out very good. But that, we hope, is an incentive to improve. The facts from VDEM can not only be a great help to governments, decision makers and researchers, but also to NGOs and other help organizations. We are in cause uh, of great need of being able to measure development and perhaps also being able to measure results uh, that are produced through our development cooperation. When it comes to democracy, it's a tricky thing because, as VDEM shows, there are so many components of this. Uh, but if it's, it will be possible to isolate one or the other component at times, maybe we, it can be really helpful for us. I think VDEM will mainly be important for uh, the work at the Olaf Palme International Center in terms of analyzing the situation in countries looking more depth at different issues. And I think we can also sometimes use some of the indicators in our work as important aspects to look into and to see how our work, for example, relates to strengthening how political parties can reach out to citizens and strengthen the linkages to citizens. We can also look at, for example, how women are represented in civil society. That's something we work very much with. And then, of course, it's interesting to have data from the VDEM. So, so I think it will be useful for our work. VDEM have already started to present results from more than one half of the countries involved in the project. Their vision is to be the natural tool in many aspects of democratization. It's going to revolutionize, I think, the study of democratization in particular, um, with the wealth of data available from this project. Um, and maybe also the study of the effects of democracies. And then it's going to become a standard tool in bilateral, multilateral discussions that are related to good governance, democracy, and human rights, a standard reference that uh, international actors use in, in their collaborations.